If you are a visual artist who, for instance, like me, make paintings, you have probably been given the advice to paint from real life and not from photographic references at least one time during your artistic career. And to be honest, I am really done with hearing this. So as my own little but hopefully convincing demonstration against this statement, I want to explain why I believe that this statement doesn't have to be true. In my own practice, I use photographs as references almost every time I start a new painting. No matter how abstract and unrecognizable my painting end up looking, I believe that a photograph has the ability to add substance to my work and give them some sort of layer that I would not necessarily have found in my own mind or in my real life surroundings. But when using photographs for reference in my work, I am trying to be constantly aware of the many pitfalls it can lead to during my painting process. So in this video, I would like to share some pitfalls <laughs> um, that I try to have in mind when planning and making a painting based on a photographic reference. Uh, and meanwhile, to prove my point, I'm making a painting based on a photographic reference in the hopes of successfully translating a seemingly mundane composition into something rather interesting Oh, well, you can judge yourself at the end of this video. Spoiler alert, I do think so myself. So first and foremost, it is important to be aware that a photograph is not real life. On the contrary, we can almost say that the photograph is an unreal moment. It is a frozen, captured moment that not even the human eye would be able to see. Even in a posing, still standing moment, such as the reference I'm using for this painting, the way that these sculptures has been captured is a point of time amongst a continuous flow of millions of moments in real life. The photograph distorts that flow of what is experienced in real life. This moment the photograph captures could even be called abstract actually, so in a sense this image that I'm using is not even a real representation of what was happening in real life, because what you see on the image you would never be able to see when experiencing it in real life if that makes any sense. I know with other images it might be more valid than this image, but I think it still matters somehow. So once you are aware of this very crucial difference between photography and real life, you can start seeing this as a special quality and use it for the better. You can for instance embrace it by exacerbating the awkward photographic posture, or you can try to bring back the life into your painting in one way or another. There are many contemporary painters who work with the photographic reference as deliberate quality, uh, such as the Belgian artist Luc Toymans, or also one of my favorite painters of all time, Marlene Dumas. As you can see, both of the painters have sort of brought forth this kind of special eeriness a photograph can contain. And they also use this strange uh, sort of more grayscale color palette which actually brings me to the next point. So, here's a very obvious fact. The camera sees the real world in RGB colors and we humans don't. No matter how incredibly good your camera is, it will never be able to capture the same colors as the ones we experience looking at the real world. And meanwhile, I find it interesting and oftentimes convincing when artists deliberately work with these digitally created colors, 
It can also go wrong when simply attempting to directly translate the pixel into the pigment, so to say. A photographic image oftentimes flattens colors, which makes sense in the photograph, but from my experience, these flattened pixels will not translate well into the painting and actually just ends up making the painting look even flatter if the way the colors are translated to the paint are not taken into consideration. So a good photograph can of course also make a good painting, but whenever I see someone making a painted version of a very good photograph, I always want to ask the question, why is it necessary to make a painting if the photograph is already good? Is it necessary to translate an image into paint if it has already proved its excellence in the photography medium? The moment when I truly started embracing the photograph as a reference for my paintings was the moment I realized that the photo reference didn't actually have to be conventionally good. Rather, I noticed how much more interesting it would be to start with an oddly looking or oddly framed, even just ugly photograph. Embracing the weird angles and points of views you make with your camera make up for a kind of unique composition in your painting. A composition which you might never have been able to make without a photo. Another reason for why I advocate for using these conventionally lesser good photographs is that you have a way greater possibility of improving the image. It can give access to another way of looking at a photo. The colors and the shapes that are mundane and ugly in a photographic context but might actually work scaled up and with the texture of the paint. So this tip is kind of overarching all of the other pitfalls that I just explained, but it's also extremely important in my opinion. Instead of seeing the photograph as the rule, obediently attempting to convert every single pixel into a painting, I try to see the photograph more as a guideline. It will help me with finding interesting composition, help with the light and the shadow positions, help with defining an atmosphere, but in the end, the painting should be its own thing. When I attempt with more traditional painting techniques, I look away from the reference photo at some point because it also trains my critical eye. As I said in a video that I made a few weeks ago, the one in which I make two paintings based on one reference photo, I actually find it harder the freer I am with the reference, but that it's also what makes it more exciting to paint. To distance yourself from the photograph's narrative and create your own stemming from your own strange universe, to me that is the moment when the painting really makes sense.
So here we are with the final painting. I think that it became quite cute, but also a little creepy, which is the cocktail of adjective that I prefer to use for my paintings. And as you can see, it became nothing like the original photo, and I'm absolutely fine with that, as it was not the intention to begin with. I'm definitely also proud of myself in the way I ended up framing the canvas onto this uneven shaped board and how the painting becomes three-dimensional with the cotton wool that I placed underneath. It's also something that I'm continuously experimenting with in my practice to make my works 3D uh, because it makes this border between the picture and the object more unclear and and in general I just like this unclearness in my painting practice. I'm not so much fan of defining things as you might have figured out already. <laughs>